My name is Jason Merrill, I'm one of the assistant principals at Melrose High School. I'm also the acting advisor to the MHS National Honor Society. I'd like to welcome you all to this year's National Honor Society induction ceremony, where together we celebrate and recognize these outstanding high school students for their accomplishments, both in school and in their community. Not only have these students maintained the highest academic standing within this school, but they've also taken the time to give back to others, both in and out of the school community. This morning, their efforts will be recognized and rewarded as they are inducted into the most prestigious student organization across the country. This time, before we move any further with the program, I'd like to take a moment of silence for former MHS teacher, Mr. Greg Moss. Thank you. I know how important that was to the students within this chapter to take a moment to recognize Mr. Moss. I also know that they'll keep his passion and kindness both in their hearts and minds throughout this year as they take part in the service projects. I'd like to recognize some folks in attendance. Principal Farrell, I'd like to recognize Assistant Principal Mr. Stephen Fogarty, the Director of Global Language, Ms. Kim Talbot, and the Director of English Language Arts, Ms. Angela Singer, are also here this morning. State Rep, Mr. Paul Broder, Mr. Stephen Malley, who's been helping out with the National Honor Society. School committee member, Ms. Margaret Driscoll. Superintendent of Schools, Ms. Cindy Tamor. Our guest speaker, former student, <coughs> graduate, principal of the Holton, Holton Richmond Middle School, Danvers' Middle School, Mr. Adam Federico. At this time, I'd like to recognize and welcome to the microphone the Mayor of Melrose, Mr. Ruffalo. Congratulations. This is the face of Melrose High School, and I would like to personally thank you and your parents for choosing to come to Melrose High School. That cannot be said enough. You have plenty of options in your life. You chose to come to our school that Jason, Mr. Fogarty, and myself, so and Adam, so I'm proud to have graduated from and were able to be successes in our life as a result of. And I want to thank you for that. Today is a day to celebrate your accomplishments. It's also a day to be humble and to be thankful. For there has not been a group of young people to reap so much benefit in their community than you. Parents of children who graduated years and years ago people that do not have children, invested in you like no other time in the history of Melrose in the last 10 years, and you have been the direct result of it. Be it the new elementary schools that you opened, to the greatest athletic fields in the state, to the finest fine arts facilities in Massachusetts that we sit in now, to new science labs, to the elimination of the open space to make Melrose High School from the place that Mr. Fogarty and Merrill and I went to, something workable, productive, moving into the future. But why you should be congratulated is that you took that incredible investment from people that did not know their name, but believed that they owed it to you, children they did not know, something better than they had, so that you used it to its greatest potential. That's what we're selling. You used the benefits that were given to you to your advantage. And from much that is given to someone, much is expected. So this is my hope. My hope is that my children, who are six, and ten, and Mr. Merrill's and Mr. Fogarty's and others, get the same benefits that you have. And they use it like you did. But I also hope that this happens. That this is not the end or something you look back on in terms of the height of performance. But this is the first chapter and the best chapters you get to come. Congratulations on the very, very proud of you.
I'd also like to take a minute to recognize another school committee member in attendance this morning, Ms. Gassatelli. Thank you, Ms. Dolan. At this time, I'd like to introduce to the leader of the Melrose Public Schools, our superintendent, Ms. Cindy Tamor. Good morning, inductees, members of the National Honor Society, families, and faculty. This is a fabulous day, not only for you, but for Melrose High School. I don't know if people are aware of the numbers here, but today we are inducting 100 students into the National Honor Society. This is the largest number of students Melrose High has ever inducted. That number says volumes about both our students and our staff. First, it speaks to the seriousness with which these young people take their education, but most importantly, it speaks to their character. <clears throat> Membership in National Honor Society is grounded in service and leadership. Each of you has found a way to contribute to the well-being of both our school and our community, and we have benefited from your commitment. Second, it speaks to our faculty. The staff of MHS has also made a commitment. They have committed to provide you with the best education we can and to guide you successfully to your post-secondary studies and career. That so many of you are succeeding is a tribute to them. Lastly, it speaks to the continued changes we are implementing at MHS. This is the largest group of students, and one of the reasons is because we have deepened our programs and provided more opportunities for more students. You are not only taking advantage of those opportunities, but you are succeeding academically and personally. Please know how proud we are of you today, and we know that you will continue to be a source of pride, not only to your families, but to our community. The best of luck to all of you for the coming year. Sometime, and maybe it's already happened, 
um, or it's coming where you're gonna you're gonna hit up against some failure. And how you approach that situation um, is gonna only determine how much more successful you become. I did my uh, master's degree in education at Boston University, excellent excellent school, and I had a professor there named Professor Bean, and I still remember his name because. Uh, it was my first class in my master's degree. I graduated from Colgate University. I was uh, actually teaching in Melrose at that point. I, I was pretty sure I knew everything about education. I knew what I was doing. And I handed in a paper, and he promptly handed it right back with a big red F on it, marked up. Unbelievable. So I took the paper home, worked on it, made all the corrections, handed it back in. He took it, handed it right back, big red F on it. This went back and forth, I'm not lying to you, six times. He failed my paper six times. Um, at first, I didn't know what to do. I was going to go to the dean of students. This guy's crazy. What, what is he talking about? I'm, I'm a college graduate. I know how to write. And I decided, though, I kept working at it, kept working at it. I finally handed in the paper after the sixth time, and I got an A minus. Not a perfect grade, but a pretty good grade. And I still remember, I still actually have the paper, I keep it. Um, just kind of to, you know, remind you that a couple of things. Number one, learn from, learn from your mistakes. Learn from failure. It's not all bad. It's not the end of the world. I, I so often see students in my line of work where when they, they come to failure, they really feel like it's the end of the world, that it's, 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 so, it's so bad. And it is, to a point, but it's also a learning experience. You have to take advantage of those opportunities. You're all really good with success. Clearly, that's why you're sitting here. But what you have to now become proficient at, what you have to now really understand is how to deal with failure, how to learn from it, and then come back from it, and ultimately get what you want. And the thing is, you're all set up to do that. I have full confidance. If you, you know, listen to your teachers at the high school, you're going to come, come out prepared. Um, listen to your parents. They've clearly done a good job to help you get to this point. All those people have set you up to be able to deal with failure, and then learn from it. So as you're moving forward this year and in the years to come, whether it's on a test, whether it's on a paper, whether it's out on the field, an audition that doesn't go well, wherever that is, something you're trying to get done in the community, and you head up against that wall, learn from that, make adjustments, and then move forward. And, and that is where truly successful people find their success. Uh, I want to thank you for listening for a few minutes. I congratulate you. I want to embarrass my cousin Bella, who I know is sitting out there, where she, she is excellent. Um, Good luck the rest of this year, and as a, as a, a resident of this town, as a graduate of Morris High School, I really am proud and honored to speak to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Federico. Now we would like to invite our four officers up at this time to discuss the ideals, or the pillars, if you will, of the National Honor Society. At the conclusion, a candle will be lit to symbolize the members' commitment to uphold that ideal. This time, I'd first like to welcome our President, Joe Hamilton. As a member of the NHS Class of 2015 to 2016, we are expected to display outstanding character. This means that a student takes criticism, criticism willingly and accepts recommendations graciously, consistently exemplifies desirable qualities of behavior, cheerfulness, friendliness, poise, and stability, upholds principles of morality and ethics, cooperates by complying with school regulations concerning property, programs, office, halls, etc., demonstrates the highest standards of honesty and reliability Shows courtesy, sorry, shows courtesy, concern, and respect for others. Observes instructions, rules, punctuality, and faithfulness both inside and outside of the classroom. Has powers of concentration and sustained attention as shown by perseverance and application to studies. And manifests truthfulness in acknowledging obedience to rules, avoiding cheating in all schoolwork, and showing unwillingness to profit by the mistakes of others. Vice President, Ms. Maya Talwarki.
a member of NHS, class of 2015-2016, we are expected to be scholars. We must go beyond having a particular GPA. The student who is a scholar is dedicated to achieving academic excellence in the classroom, must commit to being a lifelong learner, both inside and outside of the classroom, shares their knowledge with others by kind-heartedly helping those with greater difficulties in the classroom. Please welcome our treasurer, Ms. Jill Brock. As a member of NHS of class of 2015 to 2016, we are expected to be leaders. A, stu a student who exercises leadership is resourceful in proposing new problems, applying principles, and making suggestions. Promotes school activities, exercises influence on peers in upholding school ideals, <coughs> contributes ideas that improve the civic life on the school, is able to delegate responsibilities, exemplifies positive attitudes, inspires positive behavior in others, demonstrates academic initiative, successfully holds school offices or positions of responsibility, conducting business efficiently and effectively, and without prodding demonstrates reliability in the panel, uh, dependent period. <clears throat> demonstrates leadership in the classroom at work and in school for community activities. Is thoroughly dependable in any responsibility accepted. Thank you, Joe. Lastly, please welcome uh, Secretary Natalie Rogan. As a member of the NHS class of 2015-2016, we are expected to serve our school and our community. A student who serves is willing to uphold scholarship and maintain a loyal school attitude, participates in outside activities, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, church groups, volunteer service for the aged, poor, or disadvantaged, family duties. Volunteers dependable and well-organized assistance is gladly available and is willing to sacrifice to offer assistance. Works to tell with others with work and willing to take on difficulties or inspicuous responsibilities. Cheerfully and enthusiastically renders any requested service to the school. Does committee and staff work without complaint. Shows courtesy by assisting visitors, teachers, and students. Isabel Bates. August Bernhardt.
Holly Borg. Ryan Bradford. Aaron Bright. Molly Berry. <coughs> Gifty Brisbane. John Bowman. Taya Burke. Hannah Butler. Alison Bunce. Tess Caster Jr. Nicholas Chan. Megan Sincata. Molly Clark. Lucy Coleman. Joseph Connolly. Adam Cook. Shane Corielli. Connor Krovo. Justin Crowley. Jenna DeMalstra. Colleen Denny. Cameron DeBacari. Emily DePietro. Stephanie Dutra. Mia Dutra. Michaela Finikas. <coughs> Samantha Fazio. Isabella Federico. Andrew Fox. Rachel Fracasso. Jay Franklin. Rachel Freed. Maya Hammer.
Eric Heisler. Tegan Ingalls. Shannon Jones. Tess Lovler. <coughs> Connor Law. <coughs> and Victoria Lee. Cameron Mark. <laughs> Jack Mays. <laughs> Caroline McDermott. Gabriella McDonald. Julia McFarland. <coughs> Chloe Melville. Marianne Mesquita. <laughs> Courtney Murphy. <laughs> Naomi Lovren Nagasa. Yvonne Nagasa. <coughs> Caitlin Nguyen. <coughs> Taylor Norton. John O'Connell. Ashton O'Dowd. <coughs> June O'Connor. Nancy Otalak Luka. Samantha Pashonian.
Michael Pedrini. Tara Peterson. Cameron Pfeiffer. Rachel Pfeiffer. Jeannie Fao. <coughs> Charlie Basilio. Olivia Rittenberg. Alba Ron. Lily Russell. Olivia Sampson. <coughs> Jenna Santos. Jacqueline Schwartz. Elizabeth Sherman. Samantha Shields. Nathaniel Shu. Sophie Snagahi. <laughs> Marie Svoboda. Samantha Sweet. Julia Simmons. Brendan Ternowski. Alexandra Thimble. <coughs> Alicia Tone. Maria Tremendozzi. <coughs> Jay Tyler. Nick Pano. Ethan Weiss. Patrick Whalen. Jacob Pizarski. Chancaria Young.
Olivia Zabetis.
scholarship, scholarship. Leadership, leadership, service, service. And, character. and character. Thank you, and I would like to congratulate you all as being members of the National Honor Society. <laughs> Last round of applause for our new inductees. And our 